Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. It's hard to believe it's been nearly a year since we started highlighting the people, the places, the issues that matter to you most right here on Community. You have invited us into your homes to tell the stories about people making a difference right here in Western New York. And over the next half hour, we're going to share some of our favorite stories from the past year. And we're going to start with the ladies who are putting Buffalo on the map. Well, the Freedom Wall is a local project uh, sponsored by the Albright Knox in partnership with the NFTA. And basically, it's documenting civil rights leaders, uh, not just on a national level, but on a local level. So we have amazing women out here. We have Shirley Chisholm, we have Eva Doyle, local figure, uh, Alicia Garza. Just, uh, again, women that were movers and shakers nationally, but also people that contributed right here to Buffalo, especially like someone like Miss Doyle. As an artist, did you find a lot of pressure trying to capture such a local icon? Yeah. Why do we call it the Freedom Wall? Because uh, it's representing the path towards freedom, how you know, it's not just, it didn't just end with civil rights, it's an ongoing thing. This section of wall starts with Harriet Tubman and mm -hmm. ends with Shirley Chisholm. I mm -hmm. mean, that, I mean, <laughs> just that span of time and also uh, of, of great women who've made their mark on history. Right, and we were really thoughtful um, along with the Albright Knots about how to pair these people. I'm happy to represent for women, so, you know, again, I feel in the art world there needs to be more representation for women as well, so I'm excited to have a little bit of that here at home. Maybe one day your face oh, I hope will be so. on the wall. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that would be great. I, I mean, I'm hoping that there's going to be more and more of these kind of projects. Kendra is a woman who wears a lot of hats. I currently work for Blue Cross and Blue Shield as a project manager. Um, been there for about eight years. Um, but then also, too, volunteer work is very important for me. And then some. Kendra also works with the National Black MBA Association, William Emsley YMCA the Narden Academy Alumni Council, and the America Executive Leadership Council. So I, I definitely stay busy, but I, I like doing the things that I do. And she is also the president of the Buffalo Urban League Young Professionals, trying to help develop the leaders of tomorrow. We focus on ages 21 to 40 um, here in Buffalo, um, and we do uh, so many things in the community from education forums, uh, resume writing workshops, uh, education conferences. We just wrapped up in February our Black Restaurant Week, which is seeking to empower a lot of Black-owned businesses here in Buffalo. She attributes her leadership and organizational skills in part to her years as a student athlete, first at Narden and then as a scholarship basketball player at Colgate. And you have to think about time management, you have to think about communication skills, teamwork, all of those things play into it. Um, so when I graduated, you don't realize that a lot of those transferable skills go into life. So organizing a board, being in a part of a board, um, being a president of the Buffalo Urban Young Professionals, you have to think about teamwork, communication, um, you have to think about emotional intelligence, things like that. You know, you're on the court, you're constantly screaming at one of your players or one of your teammates, um, but then you also have to think about the other side, that they're human, right? So the emotional intelligence come into play, so all of those transferable skills that you use in sports will definitely go into the real world. And when you're five minutes late, does your boss say, get on the end line? <laughs> no. We're running. <laughs> <laughs> no, but if you're, if you're on time, you're late. If you're yeah. early, you're on time, right? That's right. <laughs> Those skills were just added to a strong foundation of benevolence, which was built by the example set by several people, most notably her parents. The city of good neighbors is more than just a slogan. Yes. Like I said, someone gave back to me. And there's more than one person, my mother, my father, my grandmother, uh, Mrs. McDuffie, um, my boss, whoever it is, people gave back to me, so I need to give back to them. And that's the most rewarding aspect, because I don't believe that being especially here in Western New York, you have to get involved. I don't believe that you can just sit down and not do anything, um, because we're such, everyone says Western New York is one big living room, right? So you can have different connections and talk to different people, um, but you have to give back. I think that's something that's integrated within our West New York spirit, as well as me personally. That don't go anywhere. Our look back is just getting started. Next, we're taking a look back at what's being done to keep our community healthy. Welcome back. Well, we know how important health issues are to you and everyone here in this community. That includes the food you eat, the physical activity, even your hair can be therapeutic. And we have covered it all right here on Community, the health issues that matter to you most. 
point. So let's right. check in with Dr. Kenyani Davis. Let's see, 175, not too bad, right? Well, if you put both feet on, let's see what the real deal is. Uh, <laughs> I think, uh, no, no, no. no. <laughs> Oh, well, it's, it's the holiday season. Yeah. Dr. It's time to be jolly, right? <laughs> exactly. Dr. Davis, you have to see this a lot, especially now, because people are ready to eat a lot of food. And there are some traditional meals that African Americans especially like, yeah. and all people, yeah. may not be so good for us. Absolutely. Absolutely. This time of the year, this and any other holiday, especially Thanksgiving, because this is definitely one of those holidays that most people, um, most people celebrate. Um, it never fails. If you are the doctor on call after Thanksgiving, oh, you're getting a call. Turkey, uh, the sweet potato pies, pumpkin pies, yeah. collard greens, chitlins. Wait, 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 wait. It's collard right? greens, I want. Pumpkin yeah. pies, uh -huh. you want. So, right. I, I want collard greens too. Sometimes when people are cooking, they boil their water, they throw salt in there, right? Yep. And they throw in the greens or whatever they're cooking, and they throw more salt in and they plate it, and then somebody else salts it. By that time, it's way mm -hmm. too much salt. Let's talk about some healthy alter alternatives uh -huh. to making some of these traditional dishes, but making them on the healthier side. You know what? I always say, I always tell my patients, the first step is trying to re-envision your Thanksgiving. And just because we changed the recipe a little bit, you know, it may be a little different than your grandmama's, you know, recipe, but that's okay. It doesn't take your ethnicity away, right? right. And so using things like low-fat milk, lower cholesterol, Understanding that for salt is a preservative, so we actually preserve food with salt, so really reading those labels. It's about lifestyle modifications. If you drink a glass of water before you start eating, right, and just doing the conversational piece, the whole fellowship part of eating, actually allows time for your body to realize that you're full, so you don't overeat. Bam! Girl, what? <laughs> about to play with you today. Well, that tells you what this story is all about, hair. These two have been styling for decades. I never intended on being a hairstylist. My father and brother are barbers, and so my goal was to go into the barbering industry. But in high school, Stephen Daniels went to BVTC, and he's been a hairstylist for 30 years. Black hair, quote unquote, it's different, but it's not. I look at hair as fabric. Fabric requires different levels of heat and other treatments in order to maintain it. So sometimes with our hair, it may require just a little bit more product or a little bit, a little bit more um, uh, heat. But at the end of the day, I can use every product on the market that has a good foundation uh, of ingredients on any texture of hair. Here, he's doing a feather wrap. Just taking the iron and really moving the hair into position to really activate her layers in her hair. Many African Americans braid their hair. Braids are nice because they last for two to three weeks. A protective style enables us to go on throughout our week and not have to worry about it every single morning. Hersha at Simply Hair Designs loves to braid and come up with unique styles. She's even worked on movie sets shot in Buffalo, including The Purge and Marshall. Stylists also work with funeral homes and in Stephen's case, cancer patients. And going to the salon is more than just getting your hair done. It's kind of like the pub in the Irish community, isn't it? It really is. It is actually the epicenter for uh, the uh, people to come together and discuss any and everything. Well, what are you doing to me? I'm straightening out your edges, girl. Jocelyn Winston has been doing hair for 37 years. She started at Peter Piccolo. Every salon has the one who is bluntly honest. I do care if you're sensitive because I try and be understanding and patient. Um, but at the end of the day, I want to make my job as easy as possible, and I want to make your hair as healthy as possible. Hair is a science. It is a science, it is a technique, and it is a love. And you have to have all of those things in order to build a clientele. Let's put Pete in this equation. If Pete sat down in your chair right now, he'd have a really nice haircut. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Did, was that the question? <laughs> How do you treat his hair differently than mine? Well, because his hair is already silky um, and straight, he wouldn't need, say he wanted his hair flat ironed, he wouldn't need as much heat as you do. And during it all, I got styled by both. I have every um, client from a home, professional homemaker to your CEO of corporations here in the city of Buffalo. Buffalo is the city of good neighbors next on community. How Western New York is not only good to those in the region, 
but across the globe. Community has not only shined the spotlight on some of the great things happening, but also on the issues that impact you. Yeah, like last year when the island of Puerto Rico was still reeling in the effects of Hurricane Maria. And also the black church and how it's having a role with the revitalization of Buffalo. How bad was the storm at its worst? In Maricao. Here in this Maricao area, Maria was the worst storm we'd ever had. Alberto Perez Valentin has been the mayor in Maricao for 28 years. He says that after Maria, all the roads to his town in the mountains of western Puerto Rico were impassable. So he had to work hard to make sure his people were not isolated. So we need to have uh, an helicopter from the Coast Guard and National Guard to take food, water, and all the other things to these people because they were so completely uncommunicated. And all of a sudden, you know, the Bell Center became ground zero. But the generosity of western New York has made a difference. Lucy Condelario works at the Father Bell Center in Buffalo, where donations of food, water, and cash flooded in last year after the storm. The cry went out to the community, and you know how Western New York is. I mean, we're very giving. We're called the city of good neighbors, you know, for a reason, because we, we all, as a community, came together. They gathered 3,000 gallons of water and 144 pallets of food. Hispanic leaders began meeting on the very first day of the storm to coordinate relief efforts. There was plenty of concern across Latino Western New York because so many have family and or property in Puerto Rico. Concern turned into generosity. And in addition to the tons of food and water that was shipped with the help of the state and National Guard, cash donations also came in to the tune of more than $227,000, 179000 of which was sent directly to the island. Today, we could stand back and look and see where our dollars and the difference that our dollars made in, in Puerto Rico. As well as being able to talk to the people here in Puerto Rico about how much it meant to them to know people 1,800 miles away cared. We, we are a Christian uh, home here, and we, we believe that God uh, is great, that uh, he touches the, the hearts of the people anywhere. When it comes to the black church, especially in cities like Buffalo, on the east side, or even on the west side, necessary? Oh, you know, it's very necessary. When you talk about people who, some who are struggling, who want to do better. You know, a lot of times when people think of the black church, they think of all poor people sitting in church. Nothing can be further from the truth. Um, we have people who come in here without a, we have to deal with stuff like not having a high school diploma, who then end up with a bachelor's degree and a master's degree, and they stay in their church, and they begin to help other people. <laughs> If it were not for the black church being in the neighborhoods that they serve, I think we would see neighborhoods that sometimes did not see the improvements that are needed uh, because that power of people being together, of people serving together, of people even voting together, uh, but more importantly, helping their communities that they live in. And neighborhoods is what helps a city to thrive. You know, one of the unique things about Buffalo and the black church, I, um, I've been asked to come to other cities and talk about the developments that have happened with so many of the black churches through their CDCs. Hmm. You know, it's not just True Bethel, True Bethel, Mount Olive, St. John, Mount Aaron. Um, I can keep going on. There's a few more that are even online right now. This is unique. You do not go to most cities and see so many churches that are predominantly African-American doing as much development. We were just in Rochester to talk to about 100 pastors. Mm. Not one development happened in there. Now we're looking in the Niagara Falls area to do those things. You don't see it. Buffalo is unique. And that's what community is all about. That's what it's all about. As you know, music is deep in the heart of community, from jazz to funk and even gospel. Still to come, we take you on a musical journey. Ain't no dread. Papa's got a brand new bed. Buffalo has so much soul, especially when it comes to our music. One of my favorite things to cover on Community. Yeah, no doubt. And we have highlighted it all from Buffalo's rich music history to the stars of tomorrow. So sit back, relax, and listen. There's a party going on right here, a celebration.
Meet Sean McQuiller. He's from Lackawanna. So how did he become a part of Cool in the Gang? Met them over in Singapore, opening act, cover band from Buffalo, traffic jam, right place at the right time. They saw me, thought maybe they could use me, and one thing led to another, and here I am, close to 25 years ago. Vocalist, background vocalist, and he plays guitar with a group that has been around 50 years. I still find myself sometimes I'm on stage and I can look at them and still with disbelief or see a playback of a video and just see the guys that I've admired for so many years and to know I'm in one of the greatest bands in the history of music. It's pretty amazing. And McCuller started in music as a child. That's right, this little boy from the Steel City. But it was so many singers and musicians in Lackawanna. You know, it just started with my brother. My brother's name is Derek. He played bass. And you know how it is. Big brother, I wanted to be like him, so I started playing. My second, older bro second oldest brother, Jamie, he's a singer. Once I got into my upper teens, 17, 18, 19, that's when I started going from Lackawanna to Buffalo because I just wanted to mingle and meet more musicians and singers, and that's how I started getting into more bands. Up and down Broadway and Fillmore Club, going down on Genesee Club, etc. out in Lackawanna at the Friendship House. He's a member of the Buffalo Music Hall of Fame. To know I'm in there with people like Joey Diggs, who got in a few years ago, Joe Public, uh, Lance Diamond, and so many others, it's an honor and he admires local musicians. I love to go out and listen to Will Houghton. I love him on saxophone. He's done some work with me before, I love him. Um, I like um, DP, Daniel Powell, he plays drums. He's out working with Najee, along as Hot Rod on keyboards. He does his thing as well. Big fan of Van Taylor, I worked with Van Taylor for many years. He believes in supporting and helping the next generation of singers, and that includes his own children. My son, he raps, he produces music, um, he's always writing music. Um, he put a CD out last year. Um, the title of his um, CD was called It's My Time. His daughter, Nelle. So I got the single out body that I released a few months ago. Your hustle is pretty amazing, you know, you're trying to make it happen and in this game you got to keep digging, keep grinding. The gang performs about 100 shows a year around the world. It's amazing to know I come from a small city like this and um, find myself where I'm at today with the group that I'm working for. It's pretty amazing. What was it like to come home and perform at the Seneca Niagara Casino in front of your hometown? Oh, that was amazing, you know, just to be out there and hear all the people, you know, just to give a shout out to my hometown and hear that. <sighs> that was a great feeling right there. And there's another member of the group from Buffalo, keyboardist Curtis Williams. So, what is McQuiller's favorite song to perform? A ladies' night is my favorite. Sexy ladies, let me hear you scream. How important is it that music is helping to revive the Queen City. It's, it's extremely important because you can express so much through the music. If you go back a few years, there just wasn't as many clubs that was interested in live entertainment like it used to be, but that's all changing now. You can find bands playing every weekend somewhere. And he's around. I tell people all the time, just call me. Don't think I'm always out of town because I am home sometime. If you call me and I know something's going on, I love to be there and love to be a part of it. That's what I'm talking about. His dream is to help up and coming artists. He's part of a studio near Hamilton, Ontario. It's called Jacasa Studios. What we're doing there is bringing young talent in, grooming them along the way, and also we have bigger plans with starting the label. We That's Cynthia Moore, Buffalo bred, and she spent many years performing with James Brown while singing with a local group called the Unity Band. She came in contact with a local guitarist for the Godfather of Soul who knew he needed female vocalists. She 
she sent a cassette tape, but Brown wanted to see her, and she took the drive down to Augusta, Georgia. And he had me sing something, and I sung Home by Stephanie Mills. He was impressed. You sound like that? I've got to hire you. He said, they're hungry, boys. Be honest, he was talking to the band. He said, see, this is what I need. Hungry people, hungry. <laughs> and he hired us on the spot. That was 1991. Cynthia's first gig was the Living in America pay-per-view. And she traveled all over the world singing with James Brown. This is Pictures of her performances tell a story. James Brown would often feature Cynthia Moore on lead vocals. Here she was doing lead vocals and Brown was on the keys. You're talking about the Godfather of Soul. And he coined the phrase, the first sister himself. But when you look into it, she was the only one that he featured on shows, live shows, nobody else. And the name stuck. First sister. As she imitated <laughs> the way okay. James Brown would say it, and working with the godfather of soul, sometimes tough. He was diligent in what he wanted. He knew what he wanted. He wanted perfection. You had to watch and listen. Don't take your eyes off of that. And if you do, it's this. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, that's your money. So you had to pay attention. Ladies and gentlemen, if you will, put your hands together and let's welcome the JV. Come on, sister. The JBs is a group of musicians and singers who and once worked with the late great singer and they're still going strong. Cynthia clean. still performs when she can. Hey, no Papa's got a brand new bag. Well, Claudine, it's, it's been great looking over the past almost a year and taking this little stroll down memory lane. And we want to continue to share these stories on community. So if you know of something, feel free to reach out to Pete or myself via social media. And you can do it the old-fashioned way, the internet, WGRZ.com. We look forward to sharing more stories with you on community. Bye-bye.